Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets, great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Today's lesson is about creating sectional perspective views in Revit. I'll show you two different ways to do that and you can choose which one is best for your workflow. The first method will create this view here on the right, a sectional perspective that is a bit more fluid, a bit more flexible. You can pan around, you can rotate, you can orbit the view. It makes it a bit better as a work in progress view. So you can go in here, place elements and check out how they look like in 3D. The second method will create this other perspective view here on the left. And it's a bit more static. You can pan around, zoom in and out, but the view angle won't change. So it makes it a bit more suitable for placing on your sheets or for exporting into images or rendering. So let's jump right in to creating these ourselves. I will now turn on my project browser and just go to level one view. As you can see on the right there, our section plane for the perspective sections will be somewhere here, cutting through this living room, looking at the furniture. So let's see that view by creating first a section, just a regular section from here to here, looking this way. I can now open this section up and it's a 2D version of what we're trying to create. It's time now to go to the default 3D view, just activate it from this little house button up there. Now, this is where we are, just a typical orthogonal view. But you can then go to this view cube there on the top right corner, right click anywhere on it, and choose to orient the view to a section. And the one we just created is section two. You can see straight away, it has cut this view to exactly the extent of that section. Now I want to see my view a bit wider. So let me unhide this section box there by element and just extend it a bit more this way, that way and towards the far end. So it's now orthogonal. The trick to make it into a perspective view is to returning to here, right clicking and turning that into perspective from orthogonal to perspective. All right, so now it's in perspective, even though the focal length of the camera is not that impressive, I can see some perspectiveness going on there, but I want my camera to be a bit more dramatic. To do so, let's return to a level view like level one there. Right click on our 3D view and you show camera. You can see now the camera point is very far away from our building. It's time now to move it closer. If I now return to this perspective view, right click, go to view. You can see it improved slightly, but not much because of this problem. Let me show you now. If I go to the south elevation now, and then do show camera again, disable the crop view first, right click, show camera. You will see the camera is now closer to the building in terms of X, Y coordinates, but in terms of height, it's much higher than the building still. We also now need to move this down as close to here as possible. Looking great. Let's check out the view again. Right click, go to view, and you can see a big improvement already. If it doesn't look that much of a perspective view for you still, you can go and repeat that orientation step, orient to view, sections, section two. And now, as you can see, I can widen my section box again. And this view is now a lot more dramatic. It's still a 3D view, so of course you can orbit, rotate, do whatever you like in here. But in a more dramatic perspective view, or even section. To make this view as nice as the one on the right there, I can apply a few graphical tricks. Firstly, turn on my shadows. Yeah, give it some depth. And then maybe lighten that shadow shade a little. I usually go for 20% or 
and then make it a bit brighter so I can see all the details. For the background, I usually don't like that grey background here, so a gradient is better for me. That's a sky hue, and you can do something as green as this for the lower portion of the background. There you have it. So the first method is that. The second method for more static views for printing and exporting. Let's try that now. We can now go back to level 1. And this time, instead of making a section to start with, I can create directly a 3D view from 3D camera. Try to pick relatively the same viewpoint. So, just a standard camera view. We can now go in here and disable far clip offset to see everything in the distance there. And now the key step is this. You need to enable section box in this view. It's in the properties section box. Tick the box to enable it. And you can try to manipulate the box here to get what you want, but it's really difficult. Usually people can do it quickly and easier from a plan view. Let's go to level 1 plan view. And now I can right click on that new view, 3D view 1. Choose to show section box. Here we go. This line shows the section box face that is behind our camera. We can now bring it to the front of the camera to apply that sectional perspective effect. Here we go. Let's return to the camera view now. And that suddenly looks much better. I can now widen this view, make it more dramatic as well. And if the focal length is giving you too much of a perspective effect, you can choose to always go here, right click on the view and do show camera. This time maybe I can move it slightly back away from the building like this. And the next time when I open the view, it should look a bit more realistic. Now to apply that nice view settings from before, I can right click on the other view I created. Choose to create a view template from that view. Give it a good name like Perspective Sections. And now just apply that new template to my second view here that I just created. And now that's ready for your printing, rendering and so on. Alright, so those two methods, pick one for yourself. Or maybe use one of them at one time and sometimes in the future use the other one depending on what you need at the moment. For now, subscribe to this channel to get tutorials like this every single day, and I'll see you in the next video.